Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sean McNally. I'm Monica Meyer. And on behalf of 401 Marketing, we'd like to present to you our in-depth analysis of Hershey's and Mars. Now, when Milton Hershey decided to make, it, make chocolate, a luxury of the late 1800s, available to everyone at an affordable price. In 1887, he started Lancaster Caramel Company, which quickly became a success and he quickly sold. In the 1900s, he moved his operation back to Pennsylvania, and in 1905, he began his building the largest chocolate manufacturing plant. Throughout the 20th century, Milton created many new flavors and chocolate candies in-house, but also bought out several popular products to be a part of their product production line. Today, Hershey is one of the leading manufacturers in North, North America and operates in many countries over time. Frank C. Morris started the Mario Bar Company in 1911 with his wife, Ethel. His mother had taught him the art of candy dipping. In 1920, headquarters moved from Washington to Minneapolis, Minnesota. And in 1923, Milky Way was created. The following years, Mars moved to Chicago, Illinois because of the rapid expansion they were experiencing. In Chicago, many milestones took place. The Snickers filling was created, three musketeers were launched, and Forrest Mars, son of Frank, starts a pet care business after a trip to the United Kingdom. In 1940, Forrest returns to start M&M's production in New Jersey and also ventured into small business foods. Today, Mars is the third largest privately held firm in the U.S. and operates in over 100 countries worldwide. The fair substitutes in the chocolate industry is pretty high. There's a lot of alternative cooking flavors that can be used. Uh, there's a lot of alternative non-chocolate sweets. We have fruits, cookies, peanut butter, potato chips. And moreover, the marketing plays a pretty big role in the decision making, which is pretty impulsive. If you go to a cashier and you see a chocolate bar, if you're hungry, you're going to grab that specific chocolate bar. So the point of purchase placement plays a big role. The number of buyers is pretty low to moderate. If you can look at the chart right here, buyers' power increases when, there, when the product is undifferentiated, which is not the case in the chocolate industry. Uh, when we're dealing with low profits, the chocolate industry is a multi-billion dollar industry, so clearly we have pretty high profits here. And then at the bottom, you can see that when the quality of the buyer's product is not affected by the supplier's product, um, if we're getting poor quality, then we're going to yield poor quality. So that's also not uh, partial to our industry. Our suppliers in this industry is really high. Um, cocoa trees come from tropical environments, which are at risk a lot of times for natural disasters or social or political unrest. So as a result, we have a very concentrated supplier group. There's no alternative for the cocoa bean, um, which also gives you know, our suppliers more bargaining power. This is low. Um, there's significant entry barriers. As you can see, there's large capital requirements. There's customer loyalty. Um, the existing firms have large market share as well as sophisticated logistical and operational support. So a lot of the smaller firms, really, they can't compete. So the threat of new entrants is quite low. Amongst the existing competitors, is pretty high. Um, the firms that are already in the industry are similar in size and in products. So that kind of intenses the competition. Also, the cocoa and the chocolate industry is pretty mature, um, and there's really not a lot of growth, so that also promotes this intense competition within, you know, the, the industry. There's some brands that you should recognize from each of the companies. As everybody knows Reese's, Hershey's, obviously it's Hershey's. Over here, there's Milky Ways, there's Snickers, there's Dove, my personal favorite, M&M's. In 2007, Hershey embarked on a three-year global supply chain transformation program to enhance its manufacturing, sourcing, and customer service capabilities. The transformation program results in a flexible global supply chain capable of delivering Hershey's brands in a wide range of items and assortments across the retail channels and the company's priority markets. Moreover, strong commitment to superior customer service is based on a great working relationship between Hershey's and Excel, a third-party logistic provider. Hershey's underwent a Six Sigma implementation to root out errors and increase productivity and throughout its sales, fulfillment warehouses. Hershey also collaborated to develop a web ordering system that sales reps use to order samples and merchandising material, as well as software solutions for inventory management and warehousing. Hershey gained a huge market share in North America and marketed with more than 50 brand names. The Six Sigma implementation and the successful ordering system online brought Hershey's good reputation, their corporate responsibility, and community involvement. As one of the world's leading food manufacturers, Mars is committed to purchasing 
of several key raw materials throughout independent certification programs that share these goals, such as the Rainforest Alliance and UTZ Certified. Mars is taking further steps by investing in innovative scientific research and other programs that seek to improve farming and production methods, which will help suppliers to increase both the quality and the volume of their output. As a result, Mars will secure safe, reliable, sustainable supplies of high quality raw materials, and suppliers will boost their income throughout increased yields and quality. Besides chocolate, Mars is segmented into various consumer products. Mars has a comprehensive global marketing code that sets strict guidelines for the way Mars advertises food from chocolate to drinks, etc. One important aspect of Mars marketing code is the Mars commitment not to direct advertisements to children under 12 years of age. Mars chocolate is drastically growing in popularity due to heavy focus on advertising products such as M&M's and Mars bars to middle-aged consumers who frequently shop at stores where they sell these products, supermarkets, gas stations, so forth. Mars continues to use established brand characters, such as the M&M's characters, but will refrain from creating new characters with child appeal for chocolate, gum, and other confectionery products. Compared to Hershey's, Mars has a large global presence, and its name is one of the best companies to work for. Mars has a diverse product, products and some high brand preferences to consumers like m and Actually, chocolate tastes like nothing else, and Hershey's came before everything else. As Sean had mentioned, they were the first to mass produce chocolate and bring it down to a normal consumer level. Because of this, they have really strong brand awareness. Um, you can hear their slogan, sweetest place on earth and recognize it's Hershey's. Um, you can see their logo anywhere and recognize that as a Hershey's product. But what's most important is that an average bar of chocolate costs 65 cents. They were able to cut costs by um, making their supply chain more efficient. They outsource a lot of their production as well as they increase their globalization. So Hershey's has a low cost differentiation business level strategy compared to Mars, who is a broad differentiation strategy. There's 29 brands in over 21 countries. But what's specific about Mars is that their variety of chocolate candy quality varies much more so than Hershey's. Um, you have your candy coated chocolate for M&M lovers. You have stickers which targets, you know, our peanut lovers and nougat lovers. Then you have Dove which kind of targets the higher end luxury brands. Um, and finally, your Three Musketeers which is marketed as a 45% less fat candy bar. So overall, Mars is a broad, is a broad differentiation strategy. Experience growth integrating all aspects of its business vertically and horizontally. From brands to advertising, they grew as a company internally. Currently, it's in a stability stage. Milton Hershey created most of the formulas in-house, and it wasn't until after he died that the company grew via the acquisition of the confectionery company who had Reese's. They have vast economies of scope at the corporate level, allowing advertising, financial, and legal services to be widely available. At the corporate level, Hershey's is able to allocate resources of their brand and internal development to all the respective departments of the company growth in similar ways for the most part, through internal developments and creations that enable them to put out a vast amount of product. Unlike Hershey's, Mars is a three-level corporate structure. Corporate is the parent company and centralizes all budgets across the business by brand. Next are the brands of the segmented industries, which create high economies of scope and central practices of the brand are transferred from the corporate level. Third, the individual business of the brand protects the brand and its image, keeps production adequate to sales and its own entity. They have a vast economy of scope as well at the corporate level, allowing legal, accounting, financial, and managerial advice to their employees. Hershey's point of purchase uses a mass placement strategy rather than a class placement. The chocolate is available through many retailers using indirect channels. <coughs> Customers say that Hershey's is by far the most available chocolate. Their chocolate is available at more gas stations, convenience stores, and grocery stores. In addition, Hershey's chocolate uses several pull strategies as their point of purchase using advertising and promotions. Lastly, Hershey's uses push strategies by using the concept of cooperative advertising and they give quality discounts to their retailers. As far as the points of purchase for Mars, they use several advertising techniques to secure the sales of their products. Mars uses display units and posters shown in stores and outside advertising. Lastly, Mars is successful in their strategies at the point of purchase primarily because of their large brand presence internationally. 
For our recommendations for Hershey's, we believe that Hershey's will need to acquire a high-end chocolate company to, have to bring in some variety with their products. As profit margins continue to shrink and suppliers of cocoa beans remain high, Hershey should think of having some differentiated products. A potential acquisition target could be Ritter Sport, a small private company headquartered in Germany. Ritter Sport is a high-end chocolate company with estimated revenues of 280 million euros. This is a company that Hershey's could afford to acquire and integrate within their product systems. Hershey's has operating cash flows of $1.11 billion as of September 2013 and will not have a problem raising cash to finance this acquisition. Hershey's should consider Ritter Sports as more of a test for the market type of acquisition to see if they can penetrate the market with more differentiated products. Hershey's has yet to establish a large presence in emerging countries of Latin America and parts of Asia. They have the main operations in Brazil and China, but no other countries around those areas. We believe that Hershey should continue to push it, its products lines into these countries if they want to continue to be profitable and expand revenues. They can continue to leverage core competencies when they create a new factory or distri of distribution channel in these countries. Right. ...attempt to vertically integrate into the supply chain as they rely heavily on their suppliers in South America for cocoa beans. If anything such as civil unrest, natural disaster, or other certain political events occur with the suppliers, then Mars could be adversely affected for their inputs of production. It is impossible to perfectly hedge against these uncertainties, so the best Mars could do is to attempt a vertical integration into the supply chain. In order for Mars to successfully compete with Hershey's, they should open a theme store for their large variety of chocolate products. They have a broad and differentiated range of chocolates and could cater to certain groups with these theme stores. This would also help leverage their brand name awareness as they have a large focus on brand awareness with their point of purchase advertising techniques. Thank you for your time and we hope you enjoyed our presentation.